Refresh this page. Still nothing. Nothing about the common test. 1.26. Nothing there for North America. We're always behind. Also for EU. Nothing there as well. Asia? Nope. <laughs> Alright folks, I have no idea what's happening on the common test, but main article is not up yet, so we'll have to guess with the new stuff. Combat intelligence. Turning, turning, oh, there it is. Uh, check light tanks. Crew updates. Crew perks got changed, so recent sandbox were pretty positive. Therefore, crew skills gets reworked, but uh, check light tanks with auto cannons, crew skills, dive into new random events on three maps, try 18 rebalance vehicles. Oh, I want to see the rebalance vehicle and their stats, but main article is not online. Fresh onslaught season. Oh, gross. <laughs> Variety of refined. Random maps, yada yada. Ooh, vehicle got buffs. That's nice, or rebalanced, but I don't see the main article. So without that, let's just jump into the hidden vehicles for this patch. So technically three, but two are actually new. The Felice, the Toro, and this is for Onslaught. So like with the CS-63, we're getting a T-57 Heavy with a skin for the Manticore season of Onslaught, called Stinger. Yeah, I'm not playing it. <laughs> Alright, the Felice. Tier 9 Premium. Italian Medium Tank. Should be a heavy. Practically the Contra Caro. Stock turret at Tier 9 on a Medium Tank chassis. On the Prototipo uh, 6 from the Russian server, practically, but... Uh, it's a big chunky of a medium tank. Very big turret. It's a pseudo turret technically, but now it's a full turret. It is a assault medium tank of sorts. Large exhaust. Scrubbers on the back. Uh, I mean, all tier 9 medium tanks are somewhat mediocre for premiums. And this could just be another iter... Another addition to the lineup, but also the M47 Improved Cupola that we already covered, but large prominent weak spot on the turret. Yeah, okay. Let's see. Uh, 2300 DPM. It's a large caliber gun for that alpha damage, but 127 for a medium tank. Not half bad, but accuracy very if. Aim time also kind of if three uh close to three seconds though. Well, then again, it's a large caliber gun, so it's actually faster than some of the heavy tanks using the same caliber guns. Surprisingly, might be, but eh, still kind of long. Eight degrees gun depression, twenty elevation, traverse speed for turret is heavy tank. So this is a pocket heavy tank. It's not really a medium. But, yeah, just standard stuff. Pretty standard. Four-man crew fits all the projectos. Nothing special. So, 1600 health is not that great. But then again, assault medium tanks are usually about 1700 to 1750. So, this thing could use a little bit more health. 120 for the hull front, 70 for the hull sides, 290 for the turret front, but large cupola, big weak spot. Yeah, that is a M47 improved cupola. 200 millimeter, and eh, you'll get pinned. Yeah, the turret front is strong, and you have eight degrees gun depression, so something like this ish. But the tumor on top, that is the weak spot. Luckily, it's kind of immune to gold shell other than the base plate next to the mantlet. Spamming gold shell into here, you'll penetrate. So, 
Hmm, wiggle the turret belt, but not really that fast to wiggle. Upper plate, eh, 200 millimeter. 190, 180, not that great. <laughs> Lower plate, not even close. 40 millimeter for the hull roof. Eh, the armor on the hull sucks. So you play this thing like a hull down vehicle. It is somewhat sloped on the upwards angle on the side armor. That could troll a few shots, interestingly enough. And there are side skirts. Is that shielding or actual tracks? No, that's actual shielding, so that's side skirts, but that might troll. Underneath the turret is only 35, and that's at a crease too, so you can tend <clears throat> you can tend to jam a shell <laughs> into the bottom of the turret while side scraping. That's an interesting note. Voice cracked. <laughs> Yeah, it's a whatever medium tank. I mean, if this thing has like 2,500 DPM, maybe, or a little bit better top speed, but mobility-wise, not that great. 13.5 horsepower per ton ratio, and 35 kilometers per hour top speed. It is slow for a medium tank. It does weigh 60 tons, so yeah, yeah, it's it, no, it's still kind of bulky, I guess. It's slow. <laughs> it is very slow. It's a heavy tank. No question, just crappy hull armor. Uh, camo is also kind of crap. It's okay, it's like fat medium, 14%. Fine. View range, not really that stellar, only 390. So this vehicle feels whatever, right? It doesn't feel that great. I mean... <sighs> we have to see the soft stats, but I doubt tanks.gg has been updated. So let's see, tanks.gg. All tanks. Actually, they did. That's quick. I'm just 30 minutes into the common test, but bravo. All right, the Felice. And it's broken. <laughs> broken? Oh, come on. Just have... What the hell happened? What? Let's go back to... Just a template? I think they're updating as we speak. Yeah, okay, they might be updating as we speak. The Toro? Segway into the Toro? It's a tank destroyer, right? Or, I forgot. Heavy tank? It's actually heavy tank. It's not the TS-60. Oh, uh, they're updating, I guess. Okay. <laughs> I have to wait, but let's see. The Toro, it's a heavy tank. Whereas the Felice is a medium, for some reason. I thought this was a tank to shore. <laughs> Still a premium. Crew of four. Fits all the Projecto 66. Not the Rice Aroni. The Rice Aroni doesn't have the loader. But auto reloader. Yep. Of a 105. So alpha damage is the same as the stand standard prototypo leopard prototype thing. But four rounds in the clip, accuracy aim time is if. I mean, it's only 105. What does it take so long to aim? Jeez. And let's see, DPM. Not great. <laughs> it's like with the recent UDES 03 all 3 practically. So, also not as good as the standard prototypo leopard prototype thing for the Italians. So, not great. Okay. Takes like 60, almost 60 seconds for the full clip. Three seconds between each shot, four rounds in the clip. Does have faster turret traverse than the Felice, surprisingly. <laughs> Eight degrees gun depression. And this thing looks like a. Does really look like the object 283 mixed with a pseudo conqueror esque or chieftain esque of a turret. Oh! Actually, the M2 Yo, that's what I mentioned in the original preview video, but what the fuck is this thing? There is a crevice for the turret ring. It is elevated away from the tracks, but large tumor of a cupola on top. The range finders are unlikely to be weak spots, but that could be different than the standard, like with the TS-54. But we'll have to see. It is round the hull front into a patent-esque of an oval shape, but 
105mm for a heavy tank that has crap DPM. Well, how good is the armor? It does hold up, then it might be somewhat decent, but... 140 for the hull front. Rounded, it's only about 200mm effective, so hull front is kinda bland. Or 210 without the angling. 220, so it gets a little bit better if you're not on a hill, but lower plate, 170-ish. There are troll spots, like with the E5, the T110 E5, so shoot at a bad angle, you'll auto bounce, unfortunately, but 80 for some of the track crevice, what the hell is this nook right here, 100 millimeter. Yeah, just jam a shell right there or something, ugh. Alright. <laughs> This nook is weird. There are crevices of only 40 on the hull side. So yeah, this V shape or lip shape for the turret ring might be a disadvantage. But turret front is 200mm rounded. Very, 250 rounded. Very heavily rounded. So only the weak spot. That is the tumor on top for 190. Otherwise it's auto bounce. But... Yeah, the rangefinders are not a weak spot. That's nice. It does get hit, and you could have a knocked out uh, periscope of the such. But it would be funny if range uh, rangefinder aspects is taking into account for game mechanics. Like if you shoot if you shoot the rangefinders, you have a weird messed up accuracy circle thing. That would be funny, but yeah, that's not the case. <laughs> Thirty millimeter for the hull roof. 45 for the engine deck. Eh, auto bounce for the 45, but a little bit closer, you'll overmatch. So if you're a little bit taller, you can technically jam the shell and overmatch the actual turret ring. Roof armor, but side armor is 70 for the hull sides. It is kind of wide of a track at 30 compared to usually 25 or 20, but it is rear mounted, so reverse of a turret design, helps out with the side scraping. But this nook kind of defeats the purpose if you have a large caliber gun over like 120 millimeter. So, eh, hold down. Does have eight degrees of gun depression, but yeah, it's a premium tank. I still think you would rather play with a Tiger Mouse than with something like this for a heavy, especially with that crappy DPM. Yeah, DPM. Yeah, this sucks. Mobility wise, it's actually faster to rev <laughs> and better top speed than the Toro, uh, than the Felice on the Toro. What? It weighs less too at 52 tons compared to 60. What? Does have really crap camo, so that's a downside. And view range, 390, about standard. So. Yeah, whatever, right? It's a looks like a yo turret, squash yo turret on a, a 283 of such. But okay, <laughs> come on, update so I can see the hidden stats. No, wait, it happened for a split second. Oh no, there might be a bug with tanks.gg. Yeah, it's it's with everything. So okay, I guess we'll have to wait. But full article, I want to see the buff. Please, still nothing on North America, uh, typical. Nothing on EU too. Oh come on, I want to see the actual buffs and stuff. Asia? Nothing. <laughs> so, there are a few vehicles that I saw that got buffed from Watt Express, like Object 590 or something that got buffed, but we'll have to see the actual article, I have no idea. So the Stinger is a onslaught version of the T57. So it has a skin, but like with the CS63, the skin won't appear until next year or sometimes later. So it is practically a T57 heavy you get from onslaught. Nothing special. I mean, doesn't make me really want to play onslaught unless they change the uh, the chevron slash point system. It's still stupid, but yeah, whatever. Also, remove the modifiers too. HP modifiers stupid. It promotes heavy tanks all the time. This is stupid. Just remove the onslaught is dumb. 
All right, finally, three new styles for the next battle pass. It is Waffen Trigger themed. So we have the Kampf Panzer Mark 7, but uh, does it have animations? Unlike the Russian server, so unfortunate. There is no electricity bouncing off of this thing, so it's pretty obvious. We already determined that the special theme for the last battle pass is Waffen Trigger stuff. Already have the Mirni 13 for last year, so makes sense, right? Obviously makes sense, but as expected with the loot box and other stuff, there might be a new skin for a tier 10 medium tank or so for... I mean, we got the TVP T5051 skin as a new addition to the original 3, but could there be like a new vehicle for Onslaught? For not for Onslaught, for Waffen Trigger. Onslaught. <laughs> K91. Uh, first time this vehicle getting a skin outside of the Russian server. So, this vehicle needs a buff. Nobody really plays it. It's a pseudo turret, doesn't fully traverse to the back as well, so kind of if, but you have chicken wires on the side skirts with wires, electric, electric wires connecting to the chicken wires of a fence on the sides. I mean, random sci-fi stuff, but it is Waffle Trigger, so not really that grunging of a Mirni 13 style but the headlights came back so they like to use headlights now so still don't have freaking night maps but finally the concept number five with the skin we saw this vehicle with the skin on the russian server on the first battle pass of this year so or is it first or second but yep this vehicle needs the buff why play with this thing when you can play with the leper one right or the Vickers main battle tank, but yeah, this thing needs a buff. <laughs> they need to buff the terrain resistance to the Russian server, where it has no downside going through mud. It's just as fast going through mud as on pavement, but that is kind of broken. So yeah, all the skins looks decent. It's not that eye smearing obstructive to your face, but okay. Well, there we go, folks. Hidden vehicles. And hidden styles for end of summer practically but azure manticore yeah and then emerald manticore and then crimson or something oh, okay yeah of course <laughs> it is the t57 heavy we're saw so they put a manticore tiger and there should be a scorpion and other stuff technically it's not a tiger it's a lion but and wings of a dragon and other crap, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Assault tank skill, reward, don't care. Change modifiers, vehicle durability. Yeah, thank you. No freaking percentage to, f <laughs> to the freaking vehicle v HP. Flat HP buff is a lot better, making it more diverse for medium tanks and light tanks. You're giving 25% more health to one of the most health vehicles like a mouse or type 5 any of the heavy tanks get dramatically better with percentage buff <laughs> time remaining visible okay fine whatever so they still have modifiers but uh less rng less module damage you cannot catch on fire what the f that's stupid <laughs> Makes it boring, but whatever. Uh, new vehicles available in Onslaught. You can play with your Chilling 5A or the CS63. So all the vehicles are not whatever. So you cannot play with the Chieftain <laughs> or the 279 early. No, none of that. You cannot play with that. No. <laughs> kind of stupid how they put... Also, you cannot play with the FE25B183. It's a lot better than the ship barn of a 4005. Alright. Ooh, better exhaust for bond exhaust camo. That's nice. But yeah, whatever. I don't care. No, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Onslaught still sucks. Now it's less RNG, but still, whatever. It doesn't, I don't care. It's not even, they did not revamp the point system for getting points 
and it's still annoying as all hell when you have a, a AFK or just garbage team. So, yeah, whatever. Chevron system was so so much better. Why 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 reinvent the wheel with a crappier system? I don't know. Chevron was so good. You can actually earn the Chevron placing top of losing team. Now you still lose points, but just not as much. Stupid, dumb. <laughs> Oh, there you go, folks. I have no idea what the vehicle buffs are. We have to wait for another video. That's not the setting. Crap. Combat intelligence. Tell me the vehicle buffs. News and updates. I'm, I'm, I'm clicking. There's nothing to click. <laughs> Last time to refresh. News. Nothing. EU. Nothing. <laughs> Well, folks, we're early, so we'll talk about it later, but we'll also talk about the Czech light tanks in a separate video. The video's already long enough, but nothing on the Asian server. So, funny enough, last word, we have not seen the Comrades 75, the Comet tank with a 20-pounder. It's not on here. I looked. Is it even on here? Take a last look. It's tier 6 British medium tank. Tier 6 British Cromwell, Cromwell, medium tank, Firefly, Stag Hell, Firefly, nothing there. Nothing. Is it on tanks.gg? If it's not broken. It's still kinda broken. <laughs> so 1.26 public test. Control F. Comrades. Nope. Comrades 75 is not there. Unfortunate. Also. We did cover the Grom, we covered the XM57, the DZT 159 and E77, so technically old news, already covered that, but yeah, not really that much hidden vehicles for the summer. I guess it's summer break and they're having their vacation or something, but yeah, not really that many new vehicles. We did have like the Tank Fest. And a bunch of live events happening, so I guess summer vacation. I mean, they did put the check light tanks. We'll talk about the check light tanks. They give them all names, which makes it confusing for me too. But check light tanks all has names now. So other than the Skoda T17, but yeah, we'll cover those later. But as always, thank you guys for watching this video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.